it's Rachel with Design Therapy. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I'm really excited about this video because I'm going to be showing you how I put on a murder mystery party for New Year's Eve. It was so fun to decorate. The whole entire party was amazing as well. We had so many laughs. It was a good time and the best part is that you can find all the material online for free and then it's just up to you how you decorate it. So in this video, I will be showing you how I decorated so you can get inspired in that way, but I will also be linking the information in the free story and storyline that we got online below. So I will give all credit to them. And this one gives you all the instructions, give you the, gives you the rules. It's about 60 pages, so you have to print it out. Um, gives you all the steps, even gives you the invitation if you wanna send out to your guest. And then it has the scenario, and then it has all these packets that you would print out for each character. And then they would read it out loud. And you can do it in a dinner setting, or you could do it where everyone's just kind of gathered around, have appetizers, have drinks if you wish. What I end up doing, as you will see in this video, is I had a huge table spread and then we ate dinner and then we started. Everyone came as their character. So what I did was went ahead and text everyone their character and a little description about them so that they could get in character when they arrived. And then that was one of the, you don't have to dress up, but that was one of the best parts is everyone's in their character. And so then they're playing that part and it just makes for a lot of laughs. So we, we did that. And then if you don't, if you have more people than the characters, like this party in this scenario, this plot was only seven characters, but then I just had some be detectives. So they wouldn't necessarily have a description and they would not be having a packet where they would read off, but they would be the ones that would go ahead and try to ask the questions and try to get more information out of the characters and they would be interrogating first. So that made it really fun too. And some of them, but well, both of them that were detectives dressed up as that part. So it made it, made it a good, good time. One of them even made a little badge and it was really realistic. So that was, that was fun. Um, I gave everyone little booklets that you will see that I just got from Dollar Tree um, and pins so that they could write out the information all along. And the best part is I didn't even know at planning it who the murderer was and no one else does either till the very end. So even if you have people that are there who are detectives or who are just extras watching, like I was more of um, just the host and making sure everyone was happy and I kind of led each round and said, okay, time to move on to the next round. So I did have a part, but I didn't have a speaking part and I still didn't know who was. And so I could still guess. And so if you have more than seven people, if you have 12 people, you could, you could just have them all be extras, but everyone could play along. So that's what makes it really fun too. There's no amount limit of how many people that you can have, but I will be, I'm going to go ahead and give you the scenario. And again, all the information is linked below in the free Inform, um, the free packet that we found online. So I'll give all the credit to them and I will go ahead and talk about the scenario just so you can see where it was set. And then we will go into how I decorated and I'll be doing a little talk over and we can go from there. But it, it was really fun. I really encourage you to do it again. It's free. It doesn't take much effort. A lot of the decorations that I got to set this tablescape, um, I kind of went all out just because it made it a lot more fun, but all of it pretty much I had, or it was from Dollar Tree. Or if I did invest, like I got some candles, electric candles that maybe I wouldn't have got beforehand, but I know that I can keep reusing them. So it was more of an investment type. So I did that as well. But without further ado, okay, so this is the scenario. One year ago, Robert Killingsworth bought the farm. Six months later, he was dead leaving his widow, Elizabeth, to tend to their fleeting vineyard and winery on the outskirts of California's wine country. With mounting debts and no idea how to run a business, Elizabeth is desperate to sell the farm and recoup her losses. The fierce drought and shaky economy, however, left Killingsworth Farm on the market for way too long. One early autumn day, six people passed through the gates of Killingsworth Farm to see Elizabeth, one of them a cold-blooded killer. 
and then it goes ahead and writes out the characters. And that is what I sent via text to my invites, to my guest, and they were able to dress up according to that and then come in character. It also has the rules. So I will just read this as well, just to give you a little bit more information. The following rules should be read out loud to all players before beginning the game. You are about to become a suspect in a murder mystery. It is up to you to figure out who has done it by denouncing the guilty secrets of others while trying to prove your innocence. Please remain in character throughout the game. Gameplay will proceed in rounds, and there were six rounds to this one. Do not read out loud or read ahead in your suspect booklet until instructed to do so by the host or hostess. Each round will provide information to, to you to reveal and clues you will use to interrogate each suspect in the mystery. Players must answer questions according to the information in their suspect, suspect packet. Suspects that have guilty secrets may be given misleading information to help keep their secrets a secret. It is up to you to sift through this misleading information to discover the truth. The murderer or murderers will not know before the solution round that he or she is the murderer. Thus all, play thus all players should suspect even themselves. Secret clues will provide special information used to further the mystery. These clues should be revealed only when a suspect's packet instructs a player to do so. So it has that after each round, a, a secret that if you are challenged, then you will get that, inf that information and you don't move on to the next round until everyone's given that information. Once revealed, secret clues should be made available to everyone for examination throughout the game. Rounds in only when all players have revealed all facts and secrets in their suspect packet. At the end of round five, all players will be given the opportunity to write down their solution to the mystery. Who has done it? How and why? And I had a piece of paper they gave you the, that information to, and so then I just cut it out into little slips for everyone, and then they were able to write it down, and then I collected it, and then I would read it out loud at round six. So round six should begin once all players have read their accusation to the group. We went around, everyone read who they thought it was. Round six will provide each player with a code word that corresponds to his or her confession statement. So let me back up a little bit. After everyone read out loud who they thought it was, we went ahead and turned to round six, and that is where it had, okay, this, it, let's say mystery was the word. The person with mystery on the top of their page would read it, and that was their accusation for their character. And then at the end of it, it said, okay, the person with the word, um, let's, the person with the word, candlestick would go ahead and read theirs and so on until everyone had read their information in, in round six. And this was the confession statements that would, provide, that would provide the correct solution to the mystery and must be read in order. That's what I was talking about. The first confession statement will be read by the player given the word mystery in round six. The confession statement mark mystery will indicate which coded confession statement should be read next and so forth until all of them are read. The winner of the game is the person whose accusation form most closely matches the actual solution to the mystery as revealed in round six. So good luck that they gave you that. And so I printed off a few of those and placed it throughout so everyone can refer back to, um, but it was really fun. So I will go ahead and show you how I decorated. And again, I want to let you know that I have all the information listed below and who gave, I wanna give all the credit. Sour Grapes of Wrath, is, it's copyright. It was made in 2003 by Michael Akers. So um, all the terms and conditions, they give you that too to make sure that you are giving them credit and then it also gives you contact information if you need some suggestions, ideas, content, and yet that nature. So it was very, very helpful. I highly suggest looking into this. It again, plans it all for you and it's just so amazing. So I- All right, I'm just going to walk you through my tablescape pretty quickly here. Um, just to kind of set the scene a little bit, I have a regular table that I keep in our dining room. Obviously we use every day and I have white chairs around it. So I'll be using those as well as folding chairs. And I wanted to make it look more intentional 
not that I just ran out of chairs. So I'm going to use our regular chairs, our white chairs, and then the folding chairs. And I'm going to layer it every other to make it again look more intentional. And then at the end, I used more, I used a chair that was uh, more of a dining room chair that I have around my home. And that just made it look more formal as well. I went ahead and purchased tablecloths from Dollar Tree, and instead of using the bright white, I wanted to make it look more elegant, so I went ahead and just had an off-white that I picked up, and I picked up two, and layering these with, obviously, the circle, and then the rectangle doesn't look like it goes together, but using the same tablecloth makes it look more intentional as well. And then next, I'm gonna go ahead and use this sash and it's in a taupe color that I actually used for our wedding when we were decorating the tables and around our chairs at our wedding. We had quite a few of them left over after we sold them so I'm going to use them to decorate. So I'm going to put this and run this down the center of the two tables again making it look more like it's the two tables are one. Next I'm going to be using the garland that I purchased from Kirkland this year and I had been using it on the mantle. And so I'm going to run that down the center of it and I'm just going to use two of them to make it look more full. Next I'm going to use three different types of candlesticks. I purchased just some clear ones for the ends that I will be placing and those were from Dollar Tree and then I had some black and some gold and again I wanted to mix in black and gold accents and so I'm going to do every other with the black and gold and then the clear on the end. I received some battery operated candles from Amazon and I am in love with them and so I'm going to be placing those in the center and then off to the side I'm just going to be using regular candlesticks and they're all off-white. I really love how it turned out and made it look really elegant like a dinner party. It set the mood and then as you can see I have just some regular Christmas lights off to the side in my olive tree over there and then I dimmed the lights as well so that made it set the mood throughout the night. Next I'll go ahead and just use some gold chargers that I purchased from Dollar Tree as well. Again everything's pretty affordable and then I went ahead and grabbed black plastic wear and next I will be using some linen napkins that I purchased from Amazon and they came in a pack of 12. I really love the color of them. That taupe color. That's a color that I use throughout my home a lot so I wanted to invest in that. They're still fairly cheap but I wanted to invest in that so I can keep reusing it over and over again instead of just having to buy napkins every time I have a dinner party so I can splash them and then fold them up and use them again. I'm going to be folding these in a pretty laid back but elegant way. So I'm just going to be taking the ends, folding it, putting a knot, and then putting off to the left side. You can obviously fold them in so many different ways, but I wanted it to be more of that elegant feeling, but also laid back, intentional, but super easy for someone to unfold. Um, so that's how I place that. And I just went around and did that to all of them. And again, I love how it turned out. Next, I'm going to go ahead and use more of those sashes on the chairs. And I think this really ties in the whole entire tablescape onto the chairs and makes everything look more elegant and formal. So I'm just going to wrap them around the backs of them. And I will show you here how I tie it in a knot, but I'm going to go ahead and cross the knot, so to speak, a little bit, if that makes sense. I'll tie it in and then fold half of it, the loose ends that we do have, I'm gonna fold that in so it's not hanging below, and then straighten the top. So fairly easy, pretty much anyone can do it, but it looks, it looks more complicated than it really is. So that's what I did to all of them, and again, I think it really ties it in. Next, just in our other room that we have off to the side of our house off to the side of our living room is I'm just going to have this cart that I actually use for plants outside but it's more of a bar cart anyway so I'm just going to go ahead and place some wine for everyone to have some champagne glasses because it is New Year's on the bottom and then with my Cricut I went ahead and made name tags for everyone and so I'll just place that out when everyone comes in they can grab their name tags so everyone knows who they are. 
my husband was really getting into it too and so we went ahead and taped a dead outline of a body on the floor in our multi-purpose room so we did that as well to kind of make everyone that much more excited and go along with the theme and then we put caution tape elsewhere and do not enter so that set the scene as well and I think it really turned out really well I hope you liked this video it was so fun let me know if you try it out I've been wanting to do a murder mystery dinner for so long and finally I was like we have to do it for New Year's Eve and it was amazing it was a lot of people that know of each other but it made it that much more fun because they you don't have to worry about small talk if people got along it was it was all the game and it told you what to do and the characters and so many so many laughs so let me know in the comments if you decide to do this but it was really fun and i will see you in the next video take care now bye